Hello friends, Kishan is here again and welcome you in this video tutorial. In previous video tutorial, we have seen uh, how to perform a spring security with database. So security related data we have kept into the database and we have authenticated user from the database, right? So in this project, I have created another project from this project only. Just I have created another a copy of this project and I have given the name as a Spring Boot Security Test Template and uh, I have written a utility class and there we are going to uh, see how we can consume this RESTful web services using a uh, REST template. So that's the thing basically we are going to look into this video. So in test package uh, we have it inside the test, I mean SRC test Java, we have created this package and inside this we have created this class and here we have written, I mean, uh, some method to perform CRUD operation and uh, basically this is a consumer. So RESTful web services we have written, uh, RESTful control we have written over here. We'll run this program and we'll try to consume RESTful web services by running this, uh, this API, right? So so here in this project you can see we have a, a db script uh, uh, i have dumped in resources folder is called schema.sql which basically creates database table uh, into our, our database and uh, our database is called uh, a spring security db so this will create a table in this uh, database and we have a, something is called data.sql which contains some dml queries so when when you will run this application then application uh, uh, startup itself this two script will be run automatically right and a schema i mean database table as well as insert will be uh, insert query will be executed so let's run this application so we have a spring boot class uh, over here so i'm going to run this application now spring boot app and make sure that once you run this application and your RESTful web services is up and running, then only you can make call to the, this REST web services, right? And now, I'm not going to, I mean, explain uh, these files, the rest of the files. These files already we have seen in our previous video tutorial. So if you look into the controller, then controller basically contains the method which basically related to CRUD operation basically. So first, uh, API basically returns the topic based on the provided, I mean, uh, provided topic ID and which we are passing as a path parameter. This basically calls the service and service again talks to the DAW layer and uh, DAW returns the topic and same we are returning to the client. Similarly, this will return the, this is also get method, read method which returns the all topic which is present in our database. So now our application is up and running and uh, our application is deployed on the tomcat and that is embedded tomcat server 8080 now if you go to the database and you refresh then three topic is created and there are two users right so martin and sean martin is uh, is having a role as a user and sean is having a role as uh, admin right and these uh, restful web services are secured right so these are secured restful web services so we required a uh, username and password to invoke this sort procedure, right? Now we have a post method also, right? Which basically post or creates a topic into the database. Similarly, we have a put method. Basically, this is responsible to update existing topic into the database. And finally, we have a delete topic, which basically deletes the topic details from the database based on the provided ID, which we are passing as a path variable, path variable right? So that's all about this and uh, rest of the things I had explained in the our previous video tutorial. So here you can see these are the secure web services. So we have applied the method level security as well. So uh, user who is having a role as admin, they can perform all operations. But uh, uh, user who is having a role as user only, then they can access only these two methods, read, read methods basically. But uh, these methods are basically responsible to do, perform some updation or some changes on the database side so this is only allowed for the user who is role as admin admin right so that's all about this and uh, if you look into the, this config for uh, directory then we have a two basically 
files which is related to the spring security so basically first uh, we have a entry point basically if uh, any user uh, authentication gets failed right then we are preparing some message and adding in the http response and we are sending that things that's the all about and we have a topic security configure there we uh, we have used uh, a spring user you uh, spring sorry user details uh, service impl and that basically implements user details service and we have overridden its method is called load user by username and we are passing this username and we are just authenticating this user from database our database right so here basically uh, we call the our dollar method which basically interact with the database and that will check whether user exists with, with, the, the, with this username or not and that user is active or not as well right so if you look into the database in user section we have a enabled so enable is one means user is active if you make it zero then this user will be uh, not active now let's uh, run this application and this is the way to authenticate a user from database so if you want to authenticate, authenticate a user from database then we will have to create a service class which will implement users user details service which is the and this uh, this interface is provided by the spring framework you can see the import from the spring and you will have to override its method and there you will have to call your doll layer method and doll layer basically uh, talks to the database and that will fetch the user related information right so that's all about the security and uh, and uh, so that's why we have auto wire these things and we are also auto wire for entry point and we have overridden uh, now topic security configure we have annotated as these two uh, annotations so first annotation basically that enables the sec web security in the web based application second we want to enable the method level security that's why second annotation we have applied and we have auto wired these two things and we have overridden configure method there we are just specifying the i mean uri pattern for that we want to apply some security concern right and that's all about this and uh, we have uh, we have written one more method is called configure global so basically this enables the global security right so we want to apply method level security and we have uh, we have encoded password in our database and we want to uh, authenticate by uh, reading encoded password that's what we have uh, applied this class b crypt password encoder making we have applied and and this uh, b code encoder b code b encrypt b crypt uh, password encoder uh, will have to set the user de uh, details so which we have over here as well as uh, here password encoder will have to pass and this will basically read password from the database right that's all about this now let's run our application is up and running and uh, we have a utility class over here uh, right so here first of all if you look in let's start with the first get topic by id and this is basically calling our local method and there we are passing shown colon s at rate one two three so you will have to you you will have to i mean concat your username and password like this first of all username and colon you will have to write after that password so this is called credential i have given the name and here we have used base 64 base 64 in code the base 64 api to convert into a spring a string right so we are just converted this credential into a string and uh, this method takes a uh, byte array so we have we can change the string into byte array by calling get bytes and we have created a header right header this import is from the spring again and header we are setting i mean what kind of uh, i mean data we want to send or receive so that's application json and in header section we are setting the credential so and this returns the header object so if you look into the I mean first API like get topic by ID so we get the header which contains the credential as well as uh, content type now we have created a rest template object and we have prepared the UR URL right for our uh, API and our API is nothing but the this first API which uh, get API right which basically returns the topic based on the provided ID so we want to call this method that's why we have prepared this URL now we have created an instance of entity http uh, sorry http entity and there we are passing the header 
and REST template is having method is called exchange. So we are passing URI, URL of our API, then what method we want. So get method, right? So we are jo just we want to read the topic information and we are parting, passing a request entity, right? And uh, here we want to pass the, I mean, object, what kind of object we'll get back. And here we are passing the primary key of the topic. So this will return us the response entity. And response entity is having a method is called get body which returns the topic. So once we hit the, I mean this API, this will return us the topic based on the provided ID. So we want to provide the topic whose ID is one, right? So if you go to the topics table, then we want to retire first topic. So let's run this application, see what output we get. So we will have to do run as Java application. And our application is up and running. So now you can see topic ID one title a spring boot rest and category a spring boot. So that we are fetching from here, right? So this way we have tested the first API, right? Get API. Second, get all topics. So this is very much similar to the above. This is also a read operation only. So but in this case, this will return as the as the array of topic. The rest of the things would be same, right? So only thing change is that even here we'll have to part the array of topic right and rest of the things would be same so i'm going to run uh, this method also to show you whether it is working or not so get all topic we are going to consume as well so java application and here we get the all topic right so we are just getting all topic information so this is also working perfectly fine now Now we have a, another API is called add topic. Basically, this wants to add some topic into the existing database. So here you can see again we got the header, we created a instance of this template, we prepare the URI of that. Now we have created a topic explicitly and we have prepared HTTP entity object there. We are passing the topic as well as header information. Now URI, now uh, REST template is having method is called post location. So if you go to the in this class we have a lot of post for location method so one of the method is called which takes uri as well as rest entity which contains the topic and header information and this will returns once topic will be created then just we are displaying the path where our topic is posted so if i run this application then topic must be created in our database so this returns the topic whose id is one the four so if you go to here and refresh then topic is created right so that's all that's all about the post uh, our topic into our restful api right now next we have a uh, something is called update topic right so update topic or topic basically updates the uh, existing topic so here again we have uh, got the header which contains the credential as well as uh, content type now rest template uh, object we have created we have prepared the uri now topic we have created explicitly so this will check this topic already exists in the database then that will get updated right and we have created again http entity object there we are passing the topic and header information and we are calling the put method put basically updates updates i mean this topic into the database so let's test it this api as well so i'm going to run it and so topic whose id is one we are just updating so that got updated so current previous detail is topic id is like this if you refresh then you can see topic whose id is one is updated now last but not the least api is pending to test oh. so last api also we are going to consume that is delete topic and here we are passing id as two so we want to delete the topic whose id is two so let's run it so this is also very pretty straightforward so we get the header rest template we prepare the uri and finally we call the exchange method there we are telling what kind of method we want to invoke so if i run it then sorry we have to close we have to run as this night topic whose id is sorry guys i i ran by mistake this application again so that's the mistake we have done and so the topic this is uh, got deleted whose id is two so that's all i have in this video tutorial 
Thanks for watching this video. This code I'm going to put on the GitHub. Thanks and see you in the next video.